Hi everyone! Welcome to Rogue Cooking CSA Style. We've taken the past couple of weeks off because it's summer and we've been traveling. So today I'm going to jam pack this episode full of tips about what you can do with the vegetables in your box when you're busy and on the road and don't have time to cook. So what we're going to start out with today is what to do with all these beautiful tomatoes and peppers. So you can see here got some gorgeous tomatoes from this week's box that just look and smell absolutely delicious. I also have some from last week's box that uh, we didn't eat because we were out of town. And so I'm going to show you what you can do with these um, for a meal to prepare this evening, but also to get yourself poised for the next couple of weeks to have lots and lots of tomatoes. The second thing we're going to prep and use in a recipe for this afternoon is peppers. I tend to have a lot of peppers around and I'm always looking for new things to do with them. So today we're going to be roasting them along with the garlic and onions and tomatoes um, for a really yummy sauce topping that you can use in a variety of ways. So here's my favorite thing to do with tomatoes when I'm not going to eat them right away. So what I do is I go ahead and take the tomato and I core it, which means I just take a scoop of some kind, I happen to have this little serrated scoop that works really well, and I core that top out, and sometimes there's a little tough part in the center there that you can get also, so that your end result looks something like this. And then my favorite thing to do is to go ahead and just core all the tomatoes that I know I'm not gonna use right away. I put them into a Ziploc bag into the freezer. And the end result is that you have a bag of whole frozen tomatoes. It's not necessary to blanch them. It's not necessary to take the skins off because now these are ready for me to use in any of a number of, of cooked uh, recipes. The great part is, as they thaw, the skins just slip right off. So anytime I would normally be using a tomato where I skin it first, or I blanch and just slip the skins off, that happens as it thaws. If you're using a recipe where it doesn't matter, you can chop them up frozen and throw them into soups, sauces, whatever. The one thing that doesn't work so well is for you to use it in replacement of fresh tomatoes. So if you were doing a fresh salsa, I would not recommend the frozen um, version. But this is fantastic throughout the season and into the fall and winter if you're making anything else where you would substitute cooked tomatoes or canned tomatoes. So that's my little tomato tip for you. Okay, so corn. We got some delicious sweet corn in our box today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my favorite way to cook corn. Now, corn is fabulous raw. My kids, when they were little, used to just take an ear and just gnaw it right off without even being cooked. And when it's really good, like this Siskiyou Co-op corn is, you can do that. Um, but it's also really good cooked. And yet, I also think it's really important to not overcook. So my favorite method for cooking sweet corn on the ear is to get a large pot of water boiling, and we've got that going here. Go ahead and shuck the number of ears that you want, and I've gone ahead and shucked um, three here, so I just pulled that outer husk off, I pulled the silk off and rinsed it a little bit, I popped off the bottom stalk that was on some of them, and now I'm going to go ahead and just throw these in in halves because they're a little easier to eat. We're going to take these to the Brit tonight and have a picnic dinner, and they go into that boiling water. I'm now going to set my timer for two minutes and no more than two minutes. When that timer goes off, they are done. They do not need more than two minutes and it will be absolutely delicious. A little bit of butter, a little bit of salt, be ready to go. The recipe we're going to tackle tonight is a really fun and easy one. So when I have a lot of tomatoes and peppers around, what I like to do is do a big batch of roasted tomatoes and peppers. And what that entails is just a large um, roasting pan of some sort. You could even use a cookie sheet, but I like having the higher sides. And then what you do is you coarsely chop whatever of those items you have. So in this case for me, it's going to be tomatoes coarsely chopped. I'm going to go ahead and just set these in. The peppers that I've chopped up from this week's box and you want to just be generous. There's no right and wrong way. You want to just get them in the pan with a bunch of garlic. And I've got some cloves here that are already out of the husk. And I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle these around. 
So once you have a generous amount of coarsely chopped tomatoes, peppers, garlic, you could throw onions in here. I'm not going to this time because I just have tons of garlic and I want that flavor to shine through. And then you're going to generously just douse this whole situation with olive oil. And again, I'm not a big measurer. Um, you could do this in layers as well, but I'm just making sure there's plenty of good tasting olive oil in there. And now I'm going to do the same with plenty of salt and pepper. Plenty of salt and pepper to flavor this up and really it doesn't need much because these flavors are so incredible. You could do this on a large um, cookie sheet and they might get a little black in the oven and that would be okay too, kind of that roasted flavor. But mine are going to get really soupy. And the idea here is that um, this is a recipe that can be adapted for so many uses. This could be the beginnings of a tomato sauce that you could use over pasta or on pizza for a pizza sauce. I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to cook it just to the point where it still has some firmness in the tomatoes so that it can be like a bruschetta that I'm going to spread on bread. Uh, with a little bit of goat cheese and let that garlic really shine through but it's sort of the beginning of anything <laughs> and you'll find that you could um, mash it up and um, puree it in the food processor again like a sauce or the, it could be the beginning of a tomato soup as well so just go with it and taste it you know and and you'll know you're done when it tastes good i'm going to go ahead and put it in a 425 degree oven for about 30 minutes and see where we're at and then I'm going to keep checking it. And again, you could, you could put it in a hotter oven and let it get kind of blackened and roasted and you won't go wrong. This could be frozen for later. You could put it into ice cube trays for smaller doses or into Ziploc bags or um, yogurt containers. And you'll have some fun with this. Okay, there you have it. Roasted tomatoes, garlic, and peppers. Totally roasted and yummy. These were in the oven for about 30 minutes at 425 and I bumped it up to 450 at the end because I wanted it to get kind of brown on the top. And this is the beginning. It's only just the beginning actually. You can do so many things with this. So have a great week. We'll see you next week.